let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make this super cute, super sleek little crossbody bag. Um, this is based on a pattern by So Sweetness called the Polaris Bag. Um, this was part of the Bag of the Month subscription a few years ago, and I've had this pattern since I started making bags, and I just, I never made it, and I always wanted to. So I'm super thankful I got a chance to do so. Uh, we added our own piping. We made this fun slip pocket. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cute. I love it. Um, be sure to stay till the end and help me pass the message along further by commenting below after the video. Yeah. Okay, enjoy! Okay, I'm going to start on this bag by making the crossbody strap. So I'm just taking one of my pre-made straps. It's a nice vinyl. I'm gonna grab two rivets. And two caps. Okay, so I'm going to add a rivet at the very end and then move down about an inch and a half at another hole. Grab my slider, go through one side of the slide adjuster and then back through the other. Take my rivet post, and my rivet cap, and then set that. And I'm gonna slide a snap hook through it as well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this end of the strap. Just mark off or punch a hole from the very end and then about inch and a half to two from there. I'm gonna grab my other snap hook Slide that through, rivet, rivet, <laughs> does that sound like a frog? And then set that. So then I have an adjustable vinyl crossbody strap, super quickly. And we're ready to move on to the rest of the bag. Okay, so we are actually making the Polaris bag by So Sweetness, but we are changing it up a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by making my three quarter inch D rings for attaching the crossbody strap. I'm going to start by taping down the center. And then folding those edges in. Um, so the size of your tabs will really depend on the size of the D-ring or the hardware you're using. So I'm using a three quarter inch, so I cut my tab to an inch and a half. And then I'm just top stitching along the sides. And then we're gonna slide the D-ring through and then we can set those aside for now. Um, and now I'm going to work on the outer slip pocket. Um, this is where I'm getting a little 
playful with the bag. So I went ahead and cut a large lining piece and a large vinyl piece. And then I'm gonna trim it down to the specifications of this. But I'm gonna go ahead and start by just top stitching these or sewing these two pieces together. I'm gonna fold the vinyl down and I'm gonna top stitch on the lining fabric. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a slip pocket for the outside of this bag. We, um, so this is a custom ordered bag and the order E, orderer, kind of sent me um, a picture of what they had in mind and I'm supposed to make it happen. So I'm gonna do my best. Let's see, I want a little more vinyl. So right now I'm just kind of lining up where I want things to go and then I'm gonna trace it out and then I'll trim it all. So I'm just tracing around the outer edge with a marking pencil, pen, whatever, and I'll cut it. Oh, I still need this. And then I'll hold on to this vinyl because I want to make like a fun tassel or something. Uh, so now I'm going to work on the outer slip pocket. Um, so I use this same pattern piece and I just kind of cut like a little swoop into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch along this and I'm going to turn it top stitch and then lay it over top and kind of see how I feel about the size of it. So stitch length set to 4.5. I'm just gonna kind of start over on this edge. Just go slow. I'm using like a half inch seam allowance or so. And basically what I'm trying to do is have just like a peak of this glitter vinyl show through the other side. So I'm gonna trim that all down and turn it. Trimming to about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, somewhere between from the edge. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn it. You could also add a little bit of piping to this part if you wanted. Might look kind of cool. I'm gonna turn it on my fingers, kind of roll that edge through. And I'm not gonna top stitch this just yet. I wanna lay it over See how, oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Yep. So then this is gonna be like close enough to the top where it's not gonna be super wide because we've got our seam allowance, but then a slip pocket, yeah. Oh, oh, I can't, oh, I love it. Okay, so stitch length 4.5. I'm just gonna slowly top stitch around this and just make sure that your seam is rolled out as far as possible. And I am using a contrast thread for top stitching. So I'm trying to be super careful that I don't mess it up. Okay. 
All right, that looks awesome. So really quick, I'm just gonna base the lining to the exterior, just with like an eighth of an inch from the edge, if that. So around the edge. I am using leather-backed vinyl, so I didn't add any interfacing to this piece or the back lining. I figured that all those layers was more than enough that it'll keep its shape. Okay, so I'm going to trim down the excess lining. I really didn't see a point in cutting the lining super carefully when I wasn't quite sure how I wanted it to look in the end anyway. So then I can line up the tops and the sides and the bottom. Make sure it sits nicely. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could lower the pocket some more, but I think it looks really cool. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and baste it on the bag. And then, oh yeah, that feels really good. And then it is still sturdy, so it's gonna hold up for a long time. So next we're gonna go ahead and work on our lining and then we will make our piping. Okay, we're gonna work on the lining. I'm just gonna add a zippered pocket to this one. So we're gonna fold that in half. Fold the other one in half. This lime green lining is from Fabric Warehouse Direct, FWD Fabrics. I feel like I've been waiting forever for this to be in stock and I love it so much. Okay. Seven inch zipper. Just kind of line it up in the center. And top stitch. Well, I guess technically I'm not top stitching. I really need to remember my words. I, I like to just sew two parallel lines. And then I'm gonna cut that open. who custom ordered this is actually a husband of someone who watches my channel which I thought was so cool and he was like hey would you mind you know making this bag I have an idea in mind I'm not sure what colors I kind of just want you to have fun and I was like oh okay um, so I sent him a few choices and this is the one he went with Pocket. And you want to make sure that you don't iron it too long. And then I'm ironing my zipper as well. And then we'll sew that into place. And we 
are going to be birthing this bag through the lining. Um, so I'm gonna leave the bottom of my zipper pocket open. If you would rather follow the directions for how the bag is normally made, feel free. But I don't think you do, which is why you came to this video, right? You know what I mean. Okay, I'm zipping it. zapping that so nothing frays. Okay, we're adding the other side of the zipper pocket. the bottom of the pocket up and then press that and that's pretty much it for the lining of this one if you wanted to you could cut another piece of lining to make um, a slip pocket inside the bag up to you Okay, I decided I was gonna add another pocket to the bag. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I wanna add a slip pocket. So I just cut a large piece. I'm gonna fold over the end twice and top stitch. cut that wide enough oh, just wide enough man I eyeballed that too okay so then I'm gonna line it up I'm gonna clip it from the back side and uh, baste it in place Normally you would cut it a little more carefully, but I like to live dangerously sometimes. All right, so then I'm gonna trim that all down. Hey, now we got a slip pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a divided slip pocket. I like the idea of being able to put little things in here. Doing that little chicken foot. Just make sure it stays. Sewing all the way to the bottom. And then I'll thread zap this. If you wanted to, you could add like two little rivets here or one in the middle or something. But there we go. Now we've got our lining all finished and we will work on the zipper panel and making our own piping. Okay, so this bag calls for about 31 inches of piping. Um, I believe that is per side. Last time I just used pre-made piping, but I really wanna use this nice vinyl to pipe the bag as well. So this is the same piping that's on the outside. I'm taking this cotton piping that I believe is 3 eighths of an inch. 
Oh, actually it's like two eighths of an inch, but three eighths when it's not, yeah, it's like three eighths. So I'm gonna start, this is vinyl that is cut to an inch and a half wide. I'm gonna start on the very edge and catch that piping. I'm purposefully sewing through it. And then I'm holding it all together. And then just sandwiching it in there. You don't wanna sew right, right next to it. Just give yourself a nice distance, but encase it nicely. Okay, so far so good. a little bit longer than I needed to, so I'm gonna trim it down. Hopefully I don't regret that. And then I'm going to catch the end of the piping so that it, again, doesn't shift inside. And then we've got this nice feeling piping. So we'll go ahead and do that again. Hopefully, hopefully that's enough. I think it will be. So I'm just leaving a little bit, popping out the top. I'm gonna sew through it, catch it. and sewed through the end of that. All right, so there's our piping ready to go and then we're gonna work on our zipper panel, which I feel like I've said already, but we're actually gonna do it this time. <laughs> okay, so the zipper panel, when it's finished, needs to be three inches wide. So I went ahead and cut the bottom of it to three inches by however long the pattern says. And then I followed the directions for the zipper panel on top, but it has you cut it to two inches wide. So you're cutting two inches and two inches, and then you're adding your zipper, which will give you another half inch. So it, it becomes basically about four and a half inches wide, maybe four inches, but it needs to be three. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by marking what I'll need to cut off. I am not a fan of like these like quilters patterns, I guess, because that's how they do things. They're like, oh, well, we'll just start with this and then trim the excess. And I'm like, no, why don't we start with what we need? So really quick, I'm just marking half an inch from both panels. I'm not gonna cut it off just yet but at least I've got a nice straight line to work from because I think that's what frustrates me the most. And then I am using a zipper with two pulls just because I like the idea of being able to zip it from either side or having it half open, half closed, whatever you would like. 
So I interfaced my vinyl with Decaville Light just to give it a little more stability. The bag calls for foam, but I'm not using any quilting, quilting cottons. Uh, so I don't think foam would be the smartest option with the vinyl and the waterproof canvas, etc., etc. So I'm gonna start with my zipper laying face down on the vinyl, grab my lining panel and lay that face down as well. So a zipper sandwich, low calorie, high fiber. Stitch length of four and a half and I'm going to do, sew that on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm gonna open that up, use a little bit of steam, and then top stitch it. Okay, so I've got the lining side folded over. This side. I'm gonna bump up my stitch length to five. Kind of pull on the zipper get this nice and flat. And I'm just gonna kinda take it section by section. lining. I'm basically pulling these layers away from each other. So I'm grabbing on the lining and the exterior all at once and then pulling on the zipper so that I've got a nice seam. Ooh, cute. Okay, and then she in the pattern has you, um, I think, sew out like the lining together with it, I don't remember. But you're not gonna do that. You're gonna leave them able to be separated. And then with where I've marked facing the other side, I'm going to lay this face down, lining up the edges, clipping it from the opposite direction. So using your clips upside down. And then I'm gonna base this in place because I don't want anything to shift around on me. I don't know if I did the last one like that or not, but it never hurts. So I'll lay this over top, lining everything up, clipping it from the other side. we're going to steam the lining side and then press the exterior open. And top stitch. Just pulling on the exterior and the lining and pulling the zipper away. measure what length it's at. Yeah, so cutting half an inch off both sides would have been a smart choice from the beginning, but I'm glad to know I've got these lines already marked out. So I'm going to cut through the exterior and the lining. Right at that half inch. I 
I love the way this vinyl feels with the Decaville light. It's just like even more like a nice thick leather. Okay. Then I'll trim all my excess little threads. And we're ready to attach the zipper panel to the bottom of the zipper panel. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna grab, um, if you guys have watched the video I did about the um, Kolani backpack or anything like that, it's this same method. So the exteriors are being placed together, I'm clipping it, and then I'm gonna flip it over move my lining out of the way, sew it together half inch seam allowance, skip over the zipper and then continue to the other side. And then I'm going to grab my lining, lay that over everything, clip it, and flip it. Just be really careful over that thickness. Alrighty. Make sure all my extra little threads there. So then you're going to have this little gap where your zipper is, but that's okay. We're going to pull this all down and that's where you're going to slide in your D-ring. So just right over your zipper, we'll pull that through. And since I'm using a metal zipper, I have to be really careful while I'm top stitching this. I can't just go crazy like I would when it's with a nylon. So I'm getting it nice and straight. And you will be top stitching through your lining and your exterior, but you're not gonna go all the way. You're just going to go right over that connector. Very slowly, very carefully while you're going through those teeth. And I'm just gonna kind of walk this through. So far, so good. And then we're over the teeth and I can lock that stitch. And then I'm going to thread zap my threads. So you've got that nice and secured. And then before I sew everything together, I'm going to move my zipper and my lining panel, and I'm gonna add a rivet through that connector right here. Just again for stability, etc. cetera but it's in there pretty good. So we're just gonna repeat those steps. I'll bring in my zipper pulls at this time. And then we're just gonna repeat that with the other side. Okay, so I've got the entire zip panel finished. Your lining and your exterior should kind of look like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and mark out the centers and then we'll attach piping. So lining up where those panels meet, fold this in half, make a little tiny snip, snip, good. And then up here as well, we'll snip. Okay. I'm excited. This is gonna look really cool. Uh, so main panel. I added 
Decaville light to the entire thing. And I want to fold this in half and snip. And then I'm gonna add my little main plate. I don't wanna add one that's too big because this bag is really cute and small. from the bottom did I tell you guys I lost this ruler I had to have my mom go buy me one <laughs> I was like I didn't realize I use this every five minutes but I do probably not literally that but I use it like a lot and it was killing me to not have it so sad. Okay, so just slide that in there. Okay. Piping! Now is the fun part. Uh, let's go ahead and fold this guy in half as well. Make sure things line up nicely. I can't wait to see this finished. Um, the custom orderer wanted it to kind of have the shape of a coach bag that his wife really liked. And I was like, hey, I actually have this pattern and I've been dying to make it for uh, forever. <laughs> okay, so we've got our piping. Perfect. I'm going to kind of fold it at an angle and set it in the bottom. Honestly, it wouldn't hurt to just kind of start sewing, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm lining that up with the center along the bottom, which I know I already said, but I've gotta repeat myself. And then as I go around the curves, I'm just going to make little tiny snips to help it fit nicely. Um, you wouldn't really need to do that with pre-made piping, but it couldn't hurt. So you can see, if you don't do it, things get a little weird and bunchy. So just making these little tiny snips. Just like every quarter of an inch or so. really help to make that fit nicely. Okay, good. I was like, it looks like I should have enough piping, but I'm going to cry if I don't. If I don't, I'll just kind of um, either increase the seam allowance or um, I can make it so the piping doesn't go all the way around the bottom. The way the pattern has you make the piping is really cool. So if you purchase this pattern, I would encourage you to read it. It's kind of neat how it's basically like no waste continuous piping. But I think we got it. Oh my goodness. I want this bag. It's so cool. Ooh, just enough. Praise the bobbin gods. The piping gods, are those a thing now? then I'm just gonna kind of overlap these at the center and we had just enough. And we'll sew it on. I got my stitch length set to five, starting in the center. It's gonna be kind of bulky there, but that's okay. And then you wanna sew just next to your basting stitch, essentially. You don't wanna come in too far 
but you do want to make sure that when you sew all of it together that you're catching that piping nice and tight. cut off all the excess piping down along here. There we go. It's like it never happened. Uh, so just really quick, I'm going to baste around the outside edge just so nothing kind of pops up while we're sewing it all together. to repeat all that with the other side. Do, 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 do. Adding clips, adding piping, going really fast. Do, 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 do. do. Oh, now we're going to sew it. We're going to baste it on. We're almost done. Video's almost gone. Now comes the really fun part, which is attaching the gusset. And I mean it when I say this is fun. Uh, so we are going to start with the side with the pocket, just because I'm the most worried about that. So I'm just going to line up where the zipper pocket should fit. should line up just to give me another guide point so that the shape of this bag stays pretty consistent. Okay. So you want to separate the lining from the exterior. You do not want to sew it all together. So let's trim these extra little dangly do's. Goodbye. All right, you got it, you got it, got it? You good? Okay. So I'm gonna start with my top marking in the center. Line those up, clip it together. And then with this homemade piping, it's pretty thick. We're going through a lot of vinyl, a lot of interfacing, but will work out. I'm clipping from the other side so I can follow my piping stitch. Okay, I'm going to line up the bottom center. If I can find it. Yep. Okay, got it. And add a few clips. I will be using a stapler. I didn't the first time I made this and I totally regretted it. <laughs> okay, so now we're on the side panel. So this should be kind of flipping. My zipper panel should be here. All right, we got that. Clip it in place, but again, see how my lining wants to sit? You gotta lift it up. So it's a lot of layers but I think it's easier than doing a drop-in, but maybe not for you. Don't worry, do what you like. If you don't know what you like, try both. Okay, clipping that. This curve fits very nicely, but if things aren't fitting super well, you can just add some little tiny snips, kind of like we did with the piping in that corner to help it sit nicely and then you can kind of smoosh it together. Okay, great. Glad we talked. Okay, this one feels 
pretty good. Bottom looks good. Yeah. The other day when I made this bag, I usually like to do a tester, especially for something as special as this that's going overseas. Um, I like to just make sure that I know what I'm doing before I make a bunch of changes, especially. All right, so there it is all clipped in place. You can kind of check from the other side what it's gonna look like and it's gonna be cute. Oh my gosh, I love the lime green. I hope, hope she does too. Okay, so I'm gonna just staple along those curves an eighth of an inch from the edge. Your staples may not make it all the way through, but they are gonna help hold it all together. Honestly, they're probably just gonna stab me and be annoying, but at least I'm trying, right? Made an effort. Um, some people use uh, rubber cement and let it dry for a little bit. I haven't tried it, but I think it's a really good idea. Just because that can go through how many layers, doesn't matter, because it's rubber cement. Okay. Well, that was literally a pointless staple. All right. Okay. So then we're gonna go nice and slow around the edge. I'm gonna use a stitch length of four. We'll go ahead and start at the bottom. And you wanna watch, so there's there's a lot of stitch lines. You wanna come in closest to the very center. So I'm just gonna come right above, do a little back stitch, right above those stitch lines and kind of use my finger to guide me along and make sure I'm catching that piping. You could of course make this bag without piping, but it's gonna look really good. So I'm just going really slow, especially as I'm approaching the curve. Lift up my foot, leave my needle in, slowly walk around the edge. Resituate my fabric, leaving the needle in, and continue along the curve. And I can feel that piping just kind of grip into there. Add more clips if you need to. Okay, this is going to be a thick part. Just going to add a little bit of a back stitch. Okay, crucial point. Nice and slow along the curve. Make sure your lining fabric is staying out of the way. Smush this down. Whew, we've made it through two curves. Good job. You can see I'm just using my fingers here to feel for that piping. I don't want to sew through it. I just want to kiss it. I want to get as close to it. I want to cuddle it. Whatever awkward word you can think of. Okay, I'm coming to the next curve. Checking from the back side that it's okay. Giving it a little, little poke. Really slow around that curve. Lift up, needle in. Leave your needle in fabric or you'll regret it. Don't forget it. You'll regret it. Lauren knows best. I don't know. Okay, I'm just double checking this last curve as we approach. Make sure there's no shifting. Make sure you don't cut your finger on your staple. <laughs> Make sure your lining's out of the way. Okay, 
and then I trail off my stitch within the seam allowance. So whew, deep breath, you made it through one side. Let's go ahead and remove these staples. I have these like crappy little snips that I use to remove staples, so I just slide it in. I mean, they're not crappy, but they're worn out snips. Probably because I use them to remove staples at some point, but whatever, right? sure everything looks okay. We're going to trim down the seam allowance, which is going to help it look a little bit tighter. Uh, but I got to say, I'm really happy with it. Um, there's a little spot here where you can see my stitching. So I'm going to come in a little bit closer. But other than that, I don't see any mess ups, really. Yeah, I'm just going to come a little closer on that curve. And I can do that from the camel side now. So now I'm going to trim this seam down. You okay there? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Right, we're gonna trim this seam down and we're going to attach the lining panel on this side. trim through where this zipper panel attaches just because I want to keep that strong. Not that this like weakens it, but removing those stitches, anything could happen. All right, I'm getting to that side panel, so I'm kind of tapering how I'm cutting it. one more time just so you can see how much nicer it sits without all that bulk. It just kind of helps hold its shape. So nice looking. And then this pocket could hold like a little notebook or a big phone. Yeah, I am happy with it. All right, let's do the lining now. So we're going to flip this back out. You're going to move the zipper panel in. Let's go ahead and grab our slip pocket lining. Hmm. I need to fold this in half, mark my snips. And then we'll clip it all together. I broke a nail. Whatever. Worth it. Alright. So 
So make sure you keep the top at the top, you know, that's important. So lining up my top center snips, then I'm gonna line up the bottom center snips. This gets a little confusing. You wanna kind of straighten this out and just kind of follow around. So this is gonna attach here. Put that in place. A few clips and then we'll work in those corners pinching the corners together It does get a little tricky on those side panels to, um, to separate it from the zipper itself, like the exterior from the lining on that zipper panel, but you want to make sure you do the best you can. Okay, tension all that. Okay. I'm gonna start along the bottom and you're gonna to wanna to use a slightly wider seam allowance than you did for the other side. Just kind of pinch your corners as you go. Aha, I was like, I feel like I'm probably gonna run out of bobbin soon. That's okay, cause I always make more than one. thread up and back stitch. Clip all that together again. If your curves aren't sitting together nicely, just add a little snip like we did on the exterior pieces. And then as we're getting to that zipper panel, Again, just make sure that you're separating it, holding on. You don't want anything to slip. Separate the zipper panel. Make sure your exterior is out of the way. Clip things a little bit more. There we go. Okay. And then, bef uh, now I'm going to trim down the seam allowance. And to make sure that your lining sits nice and tight in your bag, I'll show you what we'll do. Together, so push your zipper panel out of the way and line up your seam allowances and then just sew like two inches within your seam allowance along the top so that they're 
touching nice and tight and then when you turn it through your lining and your exterior are nice and tight in that top corner <clears throat> So now we're going to attach the other side of the exterior. So I'm gonna push the exterior down. I'm gonna pull the lining panel away. Maybe trim down some of those extra gobbledygook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's in my Band-Aid, great. And then we'll attach the exterior the other side of the exterior. I'm going to mark out where my zipper panel should meet. It's about two inches from the curve. Oh, I didn't make one. Okay. Make sure our top is lining up with the top. Clip that in place. I'm gonna add a few clips. Line that up with your bottom snip. There's my bottom snip. Oh, okay, there. Okay, and then make sure your zipper panel meets up with zipper panel. And the way I'm doing it is I'm lining up the top of that seam. So right where they meet, and it, look, it fits pretty, pretty darn well. Look at that. Okay, so here's my seam, there's my top stitch thread, and that is where I'm lining it up. And then just kind of pinching that corner into place. Okay, all the top is good. And then we'll work on the bottom portion. Kind of pinching all that in. They may not have helped a lot last time, but they just give me some peace of mind as I'm working through those corners. Plus it's just 12 staples, nothing too major. Good. Just don't forget to remove your staples, people. Ow, I'm gonna stab myself. All right, stitch length of four. Thread looks good. Or is there some fraying going on? No. Just double checking. Okay. It's got some body to it. I'm gonna go ahead and unzip my zipper now just so I can kind of move layers a little easier. Okay, start 
start up here and then you're going to come down from your original stitch line stitch like four give it a little back stitch Moving along slowly, got some clips popping out. See, already those staples have helped me so much because I've got clips popping out. still looks super cute without the piping. Um, you could add like a really vibrant color for the piping. That would be really fun too. I'm also really sorry if my head gets in the way. I, I need to be close enough to see what I'm doing so bad things don't happen. out of the way. check on that I think we did good I can feel it okay so I'm gonna use my shitty snips pulling out those staples so I'm like pinching it closed opening it and pulling uh, alternatively you could use a staple remover the little alligator clips you guys. I mean, or you could use alligator clips, the hair things. This is just what has worked for me. And then we're going to attach the lining. This time we need to make sure that all of our zippers are left open because we have to birth the bag through this next piece. So just kind of separate everything. Move things out of the way. This is what we're looking at. So your lining should be together and then exterior should be together. I am going to speed through this one so we can get it done. Do, 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 do. 
clip in really quickly. Clipping some more. And still clipping. Do, 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 do. Oh, now we're gonna sew it. We're gonna keep sewing it. Just keep sewing, just keep sewing, just keep sewing, sewing. Uh, yeah, there we go. Almost done. Maybe not. Not quite. There we go. Whew. Okay, so I had a little bit of troubles in the corners, but we did get through it. So now I've got my zipper pocket lining open and my main zipper open all the way. Yep, so I'm gonna grab my lining bottom, pull that through first. Just gonna poke the corners. Being very careful with those metal zippers. Trying to go slow and not pull really hard on anything. And kind of push on some parts. why I wake up and my hands hurt but I know why okay so got it most of the way through just gonna go really slowly and kind of push everything pull nice little ebb and flow there we go so it's just this big giant ball of fabric for a minute I'm gonna put my hand into my lining just so I can push out the side seam, the gusset and everything. Make sure that looks nice. Kind of push out those corners. Make sure everything sits nicely. And then I can kind of massage the lining panel back inside you can see there's some wrinkling on that decaville, but I can steam that out. And just kind of heat up your ironing board and then lay this over top. I'll work on heating my iron up now. So all that's left to do right now is to make sure my band-aid doesn't fall off. Um, is to sew up that lining pocket. So again, I'm just kind of pushing everything in place nicely. You can give a little practice zip. Oh, that's nice. And over time, the bag will kind of rest and wear down, but there's what that slip pocket looks like. I really like that. And then there's the front, so it's a nice sleek little black bag, but has some fun, especially inside that electric lime green color. Cool. And two little zippers. So let's not forget to sew up that um, zipper pocket, shall we? Okay. So I'm gonna squish it down. Label and then I'm gonna add one that says you look really pretty today. 
because I bet she does. Shove that back inside. Pushing on the corners to get them to sit nice and flat. And then we'll zip that back up. Nicely done. All right, you guys, that is a uh, pretty much it for the bag. It stands up on its own very nicely. We can add our crossbody strap on there and I'm gonna make a little tassel really quick. I just love that little pop of teal glitter vinyl there. So we're gonna make a fun little tassel to dangle and I think what I want to do is kind of make it longer let's see so I'm just taking this little scrap here cutting really thin strips I've seen a few people do this and it looks really fun especially since it's just like scraps that you can't use for much else. I love that about it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this piece here, trim it a little bit shorter, and do the same sort of thing. Just make really thin snips. Oh, you hear how awful those scissors sound? Yeek. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab my drill screwdriver. It's not a drill. This is not a drill, people. All right, so then I'm just gonna kind of overlap it and then roll it all together. Nice and tight. And it kind of creates this multi-layered tassel and then you twist it in there and it's fun. You can trim it down. You could um, trim it to be different colors if you aren't lengths and then make sure your screw goes in nice and tight. And then since this doesn't sound good on camera, I'm going to go ahead and um, not film this part. Okay, so then you're going to screw it in until that screw is nice and flush and that's not going anywhere. I think I'm gonna cut the blue a little bit. I don't want it to be quite that long. It looks a little silly. Um, just cutting off like half an inch. There we go. That's a little better. So then it's got this um, fun little tassel. You could add it to a key pull, what have you. But yeah, so that is it for this bag. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sure you're dying to know whose bag it is. Uh, you can see those wrinkles have kind of rested out, but I'll give it a, a little bit of a press. Plus it has a long journey. Hopefully it got there. Okay, I have to tell you. Um, so this bag was made for someone named Lorna whose husband was super sweet and reached out to me in June. And um, he was like, is there any way you'd be able to make a small bag like this? I, I know my wife would really love it. She loves watching me make bags. Um, so Lorna, I hope you have a really happy birthday. Your husband is awesome. And I hope you enjoy your bag. I had a lot of fun making it and um, I don't know. Happy birthday.